Howdy everybody, I'm Scott from Nightfall Miniatures and today is a bit more of a personal project. Today I'm making my own D&D character. So back in the day, pre-lockdown, back when we used to be able to meet up with your mates and stuff, we used to play D&D, or should I say, we just started playing D&D with a homebrew campaign. It's the first time me and my mates had ever played it, and we made our own characters for it. And having played World of Warcraft since the day it first came out, I've always been drawn to the Paladin. The Paladin class for me has always been that sort of stand on the righteous side of good, protect the people that can't protect themselves. And my D&D character was always going to be along those sort of lines as well. So I wanted to make a character that kind of reflected the Paladin class that I used to play back in the days of the Burning Crusade. And playing World of Warcraft all the way through until the latest expansion, my favourite armour set has always been the Tier 2 armour set. There's just something about it. It just looks like you expect a Paladin to look like. So I jumped on the website Hero Forge. as I've heard on there you can make your own character and you can have a bit of a play around and I came up with this sort of design. For me this is the closest that I could get to most represent both the D&D character that I wanted to play and that had the background and story that I wanted to portray and to play as while also kind of keeping true to the paladin aspect of stuff that I enjoyed from World of Warcraft. This was a perfect middle ground for me. So I bought the STL file and I just printed it myself over on my own 3D printer rather than having to order it through. So it cost me like a fiver rather than having to pay for all the postage and packaging and stuff. I just did it myself. It was literally a case of dragging and dropping the STL file into a slice. I used Chitty Box. It's just easier. Putting some supports in it, getting it ready for the printer, setting all the settings and stuff that I would normally use for the resin that I was using. I then pressed print and just left it for about four hours or so. And uh, yeah, I, I was really happy with the results, if I'm honest. I printed it using Elegoo's black resin. I would normally use grey resin, if I'm honest. I just tried the black one. It's £10 cheaper or so for a litre. So I thought I'd give it a crack. And then just give it a prime over with Vallejo's matte black primer. I find it's the easiest thing to prime with, if I'm honest. It comes out lovely through the airbrush and it just gives a nice finish. Make sure the paint sticks to it. And then to work on the volumes and try and get where the light would fall, I did just a Xenophil highlight using some Liquitex white ink. I find the white ink is easier to give a Xenophil highlight rather than white paint, just because the normal white paint that you get, even the Model Air stuff, comes out quite chalky and comes out quite spotty, whereas the ink flows a little bit easier and it gives you more natural gradients. So then when you're looking at highlighting later on and where your highlights are going to fall, it just leaves it less speckly and less textured. It's a bit more smooth. You could easily achieve this effect as well using a rattle can. Just make sure it's about 45 degrees just so you're getting the raised edges and you're leaving the shadow areas darker. It's as simple as that. And for a paint job like this, it's going to make it a lot more easy for me. I don't want to make this as a competition. It's not a display piece. It's to be used for D&D every day and it's as best as I want it to look on a tabletop. And I find that leaving the primer 24 hours just makes it a bit more safer. It gives more cure time for it and stops any chipping or any wear on the paint for later on. So to start with blocking out the colours, I used corn red, a nice deep purplish red, just to work on the cloak and on some of the fabric and stuff around the miniature. I wanted to keep it in line with the World of Warcraft style theme of the tier 2 armour, with the black and the gold, but I wanted to add my own flair on it, my own accents to it. And painting red cloaks and capes and flowing material is one of the things that I enjoy most, if I'm honest, about mini painting. I like the transitions that you can get quite easily with red. I like how you can make the... The stuff flow very nicely when you're using red. Um, it's just one of my favourite colours to use. So I went naturally with a red cloak and then the rest of the garments on his arms and sort of on his torso was all going to be red as well. And then I just used Vallejo flat black just to black in all the parts that were going to either be black cloth or going to be metal later on uh, with anything lead belcher based. I find it works better with a black base coat. And then pre-basing the parts that were going to be gold later on, I just used a really dark brown. Again, I find this works better when you're trying to base gold. It doesn't seem to fit very well over a white highlight. So using Rhinoxide in this case, just make sure that when I'm putting down the gold later on, it's just going to give it an overall nice, clean, old gold effect rather than it just being quite streaky and having to use two coats. It's going to help that out massively. I then decided to revisit the red cloth, this time using a bit of a brighter red in this case. It was a Befiston red, just going over all of the cloth lines and trying to give it a bit of depth. So anything that would have had a lighter effect on the Zenithal highlight when I originally highlighted it, anything that would have caught the light a little bit more, I'm just 
going to start layering this down over pretty much 75% of the overall bit of cloth, just leaving the streaks of the dark. So then I can build it up to a brighter light tone, and this is just going to be my mid-tone. But as you can see, even with just one highlight on that red, it just immediately starts popping. This is why I enjoy painting red so much. It's so easy to do. Just by putting that one bit of a highlight on there, which essentially, as I say, is only going to be a mid-tone. We're still going to go even lighter than this, which just gives it more depth and more feel to the cloth. To add even more depth, I decided to water down some Rhinox Hide and basically panel line almost all of the dark parts of the cloth where it would be in shadow. I'm not looking for a fade here, I'm looking for it to be quite stark and the idea here is to show off the shadows and the differences in where the light's catching on the cloth, on the red cloth. And find Rhinox Hide, because you've used the corn red as a base, is quite close to it and watered down specifically, gives it a really nice shadow. It was then time to start with the metallics and I started with the gold. I'm using Retributor Armour here just because I feel it covers a little bit better than my other go-to which would be Balthazar Gold or even Vallejo's Old Gold. This seems to be the best one for coverage especially over the Rhinox Hide base and all I'm doing here is putting a really thin layer down on the helmet, on the shield and on the shoulder pads and for the shield with having the spikes in it I'm just using an old brush just so I can stipple it in a little bit and make sure I get full coverage on there. It is a bit bright to start with, but I have got a plan for that, so don't panic. We are going to make it look a bit more old and a bit more rustic. And in order to get that rustic, old gold sort of feel, I'm going to use Rikon Flesh Shade. So any sort of red, orangey, flesh-coloured base wash will work. I just I like to use Rikon Flesh Shade. It's my go-to. You're going to find it dulls down the metal, takes away that shine, but also gives it lots more shadow and depth. If you were painting non-metallic metal, you'd be using dark browns and reddish colours as, as your dark tones anyway. This kind of just does the same effect, but using more metallic paints. I'm just going to be very specific with this and make sure it goes into all of the depths and contours rather than it being on the highlighted areas and make sure it's all in the recesses. And it doesn't matter if I get this on the black eye, but it's actually going to give it a nice little transition effect between the black armour and also on the gold trip. And after two coats of that shade and making sure it's dried fully so there's no wet patches whatsoever, I'm then going to go around with a brighter gold, in this case Retributor Armour, and I'm just going to do the same as I did with the cloth. I'm just going to pick out a highlight edge on anything that would have caught the light during our Xenophil stage. So the top of the shield, the top of the pauldrons, top of the helmet, anything that's not going to be in shadow. And this is just going to give it even more depth on top of that shading that we've already done. And then for the sword, instead of keeping with the gold or even bronze effects, we're going to move it over to more of a silver effect sword. And I'm wanting this to be a dark sword, so I'm going to start it with Lead Belcher, and we're going to shade it down in just a minute as well to give it more of like a tungsten, worn sword feel rather than a fresh silver sword like you see elves use. We're going to use it more of a, a dark and worn sword. And in order to get that effect, I'm going to use a bit of a trick I found. So I'm going to use a 50-50 mix of both Black Templar Contrast Paint and Lamy Medium. And I'm going to put it on quite heavy and I'm going to put all the pigment and all the paint itself into the recesses and allow it to dry. And I'm going to do two coats of this. And what I found with this is it stains the metal to make it more like a dark style metal. But it also gives the shade that you want from it as well to make it look like it's worn and it's not fresh and brand new. And it's not mithril style. It's more of a dark style metal. And this is what I wanted to keep with this. Keep the sort of darker textures and darker paint colours on this model rather than it being bright. And similar to the washers, you're going to need to leave this for a long time. Lamy Medium is designed to thin out the contrast paint, but without thinning out the pigments, if that makes sense. So it does take a long time to dry. But then after it's done, you can see the amazing effect that you're going to get with the dark steel colour. And I'm going to go around it afterwards using Vallejo Silver. And I'm just going to pick out all the edges on top, like I would have done with the Xenophil. And I'm just going to highlight all those little bits and pieces and put a bit of texture down on the handle and where the pommel is. And this is just going to give it that extra added effect of depth by having your steel as the mid-tone and then having your shade parts as your dark tone and then coming in with the silver for your highlight. And what you'll see me doing at the minute is doing stippling. So all the flat areas, I'm going to stipple the metal to make it look like it's textured. So it's not just a flat piece. So it looks like it's got divots and it's got ridges and edges along the metal. It's not just a smooth piece of metal. And all I'm doing here is just using a really, really fine brush with a bit of the silver on the end of it. And I'm just stippling it. I'm just using the end of my thumb, the back of my thumb, to rotate the brush around and make sure I've got a really sharp point. And just dabbing um, the brush onto the model and just getting that nice little stipple effect just to give it a bit more texture. And I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but 
in terms of the flesh on this model, I just use Rikon Flesh Shade over the white base that I'd done on the skin. It's really easy, really simple to do, and uh, it's probably the easiest skin you're ever going to paint on a tabletop ready model without going too in depth and without taking years to try and get some nice transitions and fades. So, if you want to see a quick tutorial on how to do that, just let me know and I'll make one up for you. It's really simple, as I say, it's the fastest skin that you're ever going to paint on a model that looks decent. And with all the metallics done, it was time to start tackling that black robe on the bottom. And I wanted to do some wet blend on this, so I thought I'd start out with some simple layering first before we start getting that blend together. With black, you're always going to have to highlight with either a blue or a grey. And I wanted to make this quite dusty, like as if he is actually in a dungeon for D&D. So I decided to go with more of a grey rather than a blue. And I just mixed some 50-50 black with some dark grey. Started putting some edge highlights in on the robe and then moving on to some layering. And then for the simplest way that I know how to do wet blending, all I'm going to do is dampen the part down with a bit of water. Start putting in some of the dark colour originally to start putting some more of the shadow in. And then afterwards move over to the light area. And it's just a simple case of you wet the area, you put a little bit of paint on the brush, and then you're going to pull the paint to where you want the blend to go and where you want it to be lightest or darkest, depending on which colour you're using, rather than doing it the other way around. A lot of people do it the other way around. It doesn't work like that. You need to be pulling the pigment to where you want it to finish. And then you're going to get a really nice blend and transition there. I'm not going for the smoothest. As I say, this isn't a competition piece. I just want it battle ready and to get it up on the tabletop. And as you can see, with just a few steps and a few colours, that black cloth looks fantastic now. So now we're going to move on to his beard. And for me, Conrad, whenever I played him in World of Warcraft or as I play him currently in D&D, has always been a ginger. So I'm going to start this with a dark red instead of moving straight onto the orange. We're going to do the similar steps as what we did with the robe. We're going to start dark and we're going to move up to a highlight. And in this case, the highlight that I'm looking for is going to be Troll Slayer Orange. This is going to make sure that it still comes across as gingers for the hair colour, but it's also going to give a bit more depth and stuff to the rest of the beard, moving from the dark red up to the normal red all the way up to the Troll Slayer Orange. I then moved on to his book, which was a simple case of painting it dark blue on the uh, outsides of the book and then painting the pages themselves more of a khaki colour. I think he used your Shabti Bone for this one. On the book to make it look a bit more worn, I went in with a stipple effect again, this time just with a much brighter blue. The idea here being that the book was bound in blue leather and over time and use it started to crack and as leather does it quite stark the difference in contrast of colour. It's not a gradual thing, it's more one's light and one's dark where it's been worn so I just went with a brighter blue for this, stippled around all the edges and all the parts where it would normally get worn with time. I could have easily left the model here but I decided just to give it one final highlight over onto the red. So just using a bit of a brighter red I went in and just put a final highlight on all the parts that would have caught the light. The idea is here to make it look as if it's a bit more of a reflective cloth so something more like a silk rather than a satin just to give it that final edge highlight and I think it really made it pop especially with the dark shades that we put in previously. The contrast between the two just really for me finished off the red. And then to finish off the leather, I went with, again, a much brighter tone than what you would normally probably use for fading. I wanted the leather to appear as if it was cracked and worn over time. And as leather does, as I said earlier, you get the stark contrast between the two colours. So I went with a much brighter, brighter brown and just used some stippling, some scratching effects on the edges. The final part for me to paint was the potion on his side. And this was a nightmare to try and record. It's underneath his cape and it's underneath his shield and his arm. And I couldn't really get the camera angle the way I wanted it, but... To kind of guide you through how I did it, I based it using a dark green. For for me, I used Stegadon scale, as that seems to be like a, a mixture between dark green and black almost, and it sells the glass effect quite well. I then filled up the potion halfway into the container using dark green from Vallejo, and then highlighted that using jade green from Vallejo. And then to finalize the effect of it being glass, I just gave it a coat with some gloss varnish, and this shine on it, really does emphasize the fact that this is this is glass as some final details i decided to put some wear and tear on the shield some battle damage by using rhinox hide to line some scars on it and then using the silver just to highlight where the metal had broken um, to sell the effect of damage and then finally on the shoulder pads themselves with them being in my eyes metal i want them to have a non-metallic metal style of feeling with it so i just wet blended them again using the same method of filling in the whole panel with water putting down the final highlight color that you'd like it to be and then just pulling it in the direction of where you want it until you're happy with it just leave it to dry put as many coats on as you want but if you don't leave it to dry you are going to pull the paint from underneath it and it's going to make a bit of a mess for anyone who follows me on instagram and if not why not i like to make bases diorama bases i like to spend my time making awesome bases and it's one of the biggest things that i enjoy about the hobby 
this model came with a pre-built base on the bottom of it i forgot to remove it to be fair and it's something i can easily do in mesh mixer or something else blender but i decided to leave it on for this one when i printed it so all i'm going to do with this is give it a base in gray sear and then slap three different colored washes on here so i'm using bale tan green agrax earth shade and null oil and it's minimal effort i'm just going to slap loads of these colors on mix them all together to get nice creamy blends in there and then just leave them to dry and it's going to take about an hour or so to dry because it's quite thick on these but it's going to give me an amazing effect for very very little effort with the base finally dry, I decided to add some pigments. Pigments are my new go-to for dioramas and for making things look weathered and worn and dirty and dusty. So all I'm doing here is just slapping some pigment on, mixing the pigment around. I'm using dark earth, medium earth, and also light earth, and a little bit of rust as well. And I'm going around all the bottom of the cloak and the cloth where it would naturally pick up dirt, especially if you're delving through a dungeon. And I'm also doing the same thing all over those tiles on the base as well. It's going to all mix together and give it a really nice effect as if it's been dragged through a dirty dank dark dungeon and once the base removing paint of black conrad was finally done i'm absolutely over the moon with this guy i couldn't wait to get him painted all the way from back in world of warcraft days coming out to how i use him in dnd now i want to spend a bit more time on him than i would do a normal rank and file troop which is why it's taking me roughly about four hours to get this guy done but there's a lot of techniques and a lot of learnings I've taken from this as well as you do with all of your miniature painting and it's kind of a journey whenever you take on something like this especially when it's something that you've actually created yourself and is custom to yourself. I absolutely love the style and aesthetic of what he's done. I'm going to be using a lot of these styles in my Cities of Sigmar army that I've recently 3D printed from Titanforge so uh, look forward to more content of that style coming up very very shortly. But if you've enjoyed this content and you want to see some more of the stuff that I create you can help the channel just by liking, commenting, and subscribing. And we will most certainly see you in the next one.